Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to do some performance testing between this, the On Running Cloud Monster, and this, the On Running Cloud Boom Echo. First, I'm gonna go through some general criteria on both of the shoes, then I'm gonna run in them and review the data. And finally, I'm gonna see which is faster and by how much. I'm making this video because I wanted to compare the performance between these two on shoes, the Cloud Monster and Cloud Boom Echo. On say the Cloud Monster it has a playfully weird ride, but is definitely serious about performance. And so I wanted to compare it to their other marathon level performance shoe, the Cloud Boom Echo that I ran the Zurich Marathon in recently. I reviewed both separately and I'll put links at the end and uh, I'll do a quick comparison between the two and then do the performance testing. In a previous video, I compared the performance of the Nike Alpha Fly with the Nike Invincible Run Flyknit. And I was surprised at the difference between the speed. I thought it'd be much further apart than it turned out to be, which is about three to 4% difference. I've also seen people run past me and faster in marathons wearing the Invincible Run Flyknits. So when On released the Cloud Monster and said it was serious about performance, I kind of wanted to see if it had the same relationship with the On Running Cloud Boom Echo. A quick overview, the Cloud Monster weighs 340 grams or 12 ounces, and the Cloud Boom Echo is lighter at 273 grams or 9.6 ounces. The Cloud Monster has a 30 millimeter stack height, but the Cloud Boom Echo is slightly higher at 35 mil. And in terms of the drop, the Cloud Monster is a six millimeter drop and the Cloud Boom Echo eight millimeters. And I thank you, Anna, at On Running for giving me all the statistics on the drop and the stack height. In terms of sizing, I bought both shoes in the US M13, EU48, UK 12.5. The Cloud Monster, um, I could have gone down a half size in, but the uh, Cloud Boom Echo was, uh, fits fine, slightly tight on my outside toes as I was running the marathon, but nothing to worry about. Both on shoes have typical traction and grip of an on shoe not fantastic in the wet nothing outrageous they sound okay com particularly compared to the alpha fly which makes a plopping sound as you run along in terms of the running field the cloud monster is very different to the clifton c7s i also ran in and um, very nice feeling both walking and running in it and then when you swap out to the cloud boom echo you can feel the thinness of the heel you can feel a very different kind of springiness um, in terms of the durability um, on running shoes I have found don't last as long as other shoes that I have so I'm expecting to get 300k out of both of them but shoes I've enjoyed running in. In terms of cost the Cloud Monster is the cheaper which you'd expect 169.95 euro, 169.99 dollars, 150 pounds or 259.95 Australian dollars whereas the Cloud Boom Echo is at the premium end of the carbon fiber shoes 249.95 euro, 269.99 dollars, 210 pounds or 369.95 Australian dollars. So yeah, an expensive shoe. On make big claims for both shoes. Um, they, uh, in terms of Cloud Monster, a monster sensation meets big performance. So we'll see. And in terms of their Cloud Boom Echo, get ready to blow your PR to pieces, boom by name, boom by nature. I ran the Cloud Boom Echo in the Zurich Marathon, as I mentioned, and uh, enjoyed it it's very good when i'm going really quick i probably should have listened to very many viewers who said they're probably best for up to 10k and for me i think that's probably the truth when i wanted to pick up the speed they were really fantastic but uh, in terms of second half of marathon energy i i didn't quite have it but yeah when you want to go fast they'll take you fast so to test the shoes, I do gut brushes in the park, one kilometer time trials using the ABBA or ABBA method. So I go out two days as close as possible together to get the same weather conditions or similar weather conditions, my same typical level of performance myself. It's the same track, I run at the same kind of day and I do the, I use a Garmin to do the uh, recording and I also use a stride foot pod for additional data. So I essentially go out in the same conditions on the shoes. One day I typically warm up in a Clifton 7, just one kilometer warm up. And then I go out hard in one shoe followed by the other shoe. And then the following day or the next time I do it, I reverse the order of the shoes in case, you know, you're more tired on the second run or perhaps you're more warmed up, whatever. So just to balance the two out, I'll go fast in one shoe followed by the other and then reverse the order the next time. Caveat time or getting my excuses in early. Last time I did this, I, I didn't go through the caveats and I realized some people only watch one video. So here they are. This is an inexact science. I'm running off a small data set. The lab rat is old and recovering from COVID. What works for me may not work for you and I'm 
not infallible. And in with the gut busting data, there's a lot of gut feeling. All I'm trying to do is get a little data and a little knowledge to try and, and help myself and maybe you make a little bit better uh, decisions in terms of purchasing shoes and maybe which ones to run uh, in which situation. So enough excuses, let's get running. The first day of performance testing I did on a Saturday and then the park was very busy on the Sunday so I did the next one on the Monday and on Saturday I went out in Cloud Monster first and then the Monday to Cloud Boom Echo first. Now previously my best time in a Cloud Boom Echo was 3 minutes 56 which compared to my best time in an Alpha Fly at 3.48 gives you some idea. Um, I'm four weeks <laughs> post COVID and I'm just nodding, hit, not hitting the top end in terms of speed. Um, I was going full basking shark and sucking in as much air as possible. But look, what matters is that the, uh, the comparisons, it was the same for both. And I think the comparisons between the shoe stands. So how'd I get on? Well, I put the performance data up here as we go along, but the, uh, the Monday times were slower than the Saturday. Um, I had gone out on the Sunday and ran a relatively fast 10K and I thought, oh, I'm getting over this COVID thing. Um, but anyway, on the, on the Monday, I ran not as fast as I did on the Saturday. I ran in the Cloud Monster. I did four minutes 16 for kilometer on the uh, Saturday, followed by 4.23 on the Monday. And the Cloud Boom Echo was 4.11 and then 4.12. So let's see what that means overall. So what can we conclude? Well. COVID is still affecting my performance, not in a good way. Um, hopefully that will change. The next conclusion is the Cloud Boom Echo is faster than the Cloud Monster. We pretty much probably already knew that, but how much faster? Well, it's actually got a very similar difference between the Nike Alpha Fly and the Invincible Run Flyknit. The Invincible Run Flyknit is about 4% slower uh, than the Alpha Fly. And it's actually the same here. The, the uh, Cloud Monster, it's about 4% off in performance terms in terms of what I can run in it. So yeah, the Cloud Boom Echo is faster. My real interest is why is one shoe faster than the other? So why is this shoe slower than this shoe? Well, when you drill down into the data, the steps per minute, my cadence for both was identical at 188 steps per minute on average over the one kilometer. The difference came in the stride length. In the Cloud Monster, it was 1.22 meters, whereas in the Cloud Boom Echo, it was 1.28 meters. I was simply going further per stride. And that's linked to the vertical oscillation. So in the Cloud Monster, it was 6.21 centimeters, and in the Cloud Boom Echo, it was lower at 6.10 centimeters. So the simple reason why I was going further and faster in the Cloud Boom Echo was simple efficiency. I was simply striding, I was doing less bunny hopping, I was simply uh, not wasting energy in, in the upwards motion, I was propelling myself forward faster. So overall, what do I think? Well, I like the Cloud Boom Echo, it's fast over short distances. When I wanted to sprint, when I had the energy in the Zurich Marathon, it really flew. Um, but I think it's suited to shorter distances. Interestingly enough, when I was doing the research yesterday, I came across on the on-running site images of what was described as the Cloud Boom Echo 3. I'll show a few here, um, which doesn't exist. It said it is sold out. Uh, on-running typically don't number their shoes. They give them different names or else they just do different versions. It's got the same name. Um, but it was interesting. It seems to be a quite a different looking shoe. I'm kind of really looking forward to it. But anyway, have a sneak preview. It may be just a tester they mocked up, who knows? But anyway, it was kind of interesting to find it sort of uh, in reasonable plain view on the on-running site. Um, in terms of the Cloud Monster, well, it's not monstrous performance, but there's a decent performance. It's a nice, easy day shoe. And uh, yeah, I expect I'll see some other people passing me by wearing those in some marathon further down the road. But uh, Cloud Monster, yeah, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a, it's a reasonable performance shoe and uh, it's one I'm happy I bought. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it vaguely useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. There'll be lots of stuff down in the description below. And as always, I'll happily answer anything that you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.